This is Starlink Battle for Atlas. This is on Xbox One X. It is enhanced. No real details on that, but it does look visually better. So this is a completely sort of open galaxy space game where all the aliens speak very fluent English and a bunch of kids around my age are going around shooting up space monsters and stuff. There's a, a narrative involved and it. it's kind of, uh, I don't know, epic to a degree, sort of dark. It's interesting. But yeah, you're just sort of free to kind of go around in space and uh, do what you like. And then you can fly all the way up to a planet. So we've got uh, Kyrite here and there's another one there, Sonatas. These are the kind of the starting planets. Our main goal is a planet way over there and there's like a hyper drive and everything. But I thought I'd show off just kind of uh, the transition here between going from space to planet. And there's like asteroids and then there's these weird kind of lame little deflector thingies that kind of get in the way and you have to move through them or else they bother you for two seconds and then you have to start up your hybrid drive again. It's a really annoying thing and that's like a lot of this is, you know, it feels kind of tedious. Uh, you gotta like go to planets and do like side ventures and missions. There's our main sort of ship, uh, the Equinox, which I think is the name of a vehicle. Pretty sure one of our family vehicles is that. Anyways, so I could fast travel, but I, I think it's cooler to show sort of the transition between going from space onto a planet because it really is quite cool. And then we're going to go over to the main sort of planet that our mission is. I'm just trying to show this off here. So everything's in a ship. There are cutscenes, you know, full CGI cutscenes, which are pretty good looking. And it, it really is an impressive galaxy. So it, it's set. It's not like, you know, No Man's Sky. These are, these are planets that have been crafted and beautifully crafted. These are just absolutely gorgeous. I could spend countless hours just sort of flying around the planets, taking them in. They're so distinct and there's so many different like sort of biomes and setups to them. It's just impressive. I wish there was more like life, but there's ruins and everything hidden throughout. So here's this planet. You can see what I've explored in the past. I'm on like, I guess, the dark side of it. But you go around and there's all these different things you can do and all these missions and different objectives and bases and crash things and refineries and you can build outposts to refine more currency and you get currency every so often. I've got like nothing left. Uh, it's kind of that gold thing in the top left corner because I just bought this mining thing so I could progress the campaign. But to do that I had to go and do a bunch of boring side missions like this so that I could collect the blue kind of material that you're seeing beside where it says common mod. And that lets you be able to basically buy things and upgrade stuff such as your ship. Um, you can see the ship here. Different tiers, different costs, and you can get uh, new abilities, new storage, new powers and everything like that. Uh, you can improve your team. There's little collections that kind of give you details on people and ships and everything like that. Uh, your ships kind of act as your lives and when you're all out of ships you have to come back from orbit and like redo a whole mission which kind of gets annoying. I accidentally just clicked uh, instead of switching ships the first time, go back to orbit during a boss fight where I like, almost finished it, and I had to redo the whole thing, which was super annoying. So we've got our ships here. Uh, there's a bunch of different ships, and your ships can basically get uh, mods on them. So you haven't really equipped in any mods on this ship because it's not my primary. I actually think it's the last one I have left. And you can kind of see how the the mods affect your ship, and like the slots are different too, with what kind of like items you can have. There's like elemental ones, some are boosting, some give you more damage, some protect you better. And then on top of that you have these two guns you can adjust. You can see that on the left uh, left trigger, right trigger. It's, it, during missions you gotta, gotta swap uh, between what you're doing based on the elemental enemy that you're fighting. Like you might fight like an ice guy and then the fire does more damage. And I've, I've kind of been trying to stick to two primary weapons that I'm finding useful, but you can, it's like Vortex, and there's different elemental styles to it. Uh, you can flip the guns too if you'd like, uh, you click X, and you can also add mods onto the guns too to increase the fire rate and the damage and everything like that. And you can easily switch between them using the bumpers too, but I wanted to give like a sense of where you're selecting things when I'm doing this. Uh, there's pilot skills, you unlock skills, and then you can make your pilot a little bit better, help out other people too. 
and uh, yeah that's kind of just the general layout there so we've got the map here you're kind of getting an idea of it they're pretty expansive worlds with a lot of things to do it's a very typical Ubisoft experience in that regard think of it like Far Cry where you gotta go and do all these like side missions and outposts and if that's something you're interested in there's tons to do and every planet has different enemies and missions and things you can take part in you can also like call for a mission too if you want something else to do and uh, you have to play for quite a few hours and then it opens up into more of like a, a Mass Effect style thing where you're you're fighting for planets so I guess I've been losing this planet so you gotta do missions and boring side quests and stuff in order to gain more of a, an influence on the planet you can see this one I've this is what I've been working on uh, Violus to build up my influence on the planet building refineries outposts stuff like that uh, there's outlaws too that are kind of in the middle you can kill them and you get like rare mod parts and good rewards lots of money there's a fair bit of planets and some hidden stuff too uh, right now they're like I'm in the mission of dealing with a dreadnought I thought that was a good point to show it off because I'm not really doing anything too narrative focused as not to spoil the the game but I am at a point where it's it's really you know past opened up I've done a quite a few hours uh, exploring and working on planets and I think there's a lot of you know potential on this one for you know sort of exploring and just playing this for countless hours because I know a lot of people want a space game but they also want the one that's a little bit more casual I feel like I'm, I'm a little bit hindered by not having the toys this is a, a toy to game experience but you don't have to have the toys to play it but it really does feel like the toys would be quite an enhancement to the experience just personally I, I can't say though because I don't know but uh, those are kind of my thoughts right now I'm in like a hover mode extract this mi mineral and stuff and you can use it in like sell it at places uh, but yeah you've got uh, you know you got your base here and then you can fly up if you'd like to you can fight from the air and fight on the ground so you cut your engine go down you have a shield you can use during combat, so there's a special kind of orbital drop I have too. Uh, there's different pilots and obviously different ships and stuff like that as well. These guys are just like low levels, but I want to show off just a little bit of the combat quickly. So you're sort of moving around, you can strafe, uh, you can jump and kind of do like a flip and stuff. And it's pretty cool. And my controller is a little bit uh, hingy tonight for some reason, if that's showing up in the background, so I don't know why. Yeah, you've got your, your two, the, like, your weapon options. And you can see how I've got, like, a chain marker going on there, like a, you know, a trick XP and everything boost on the side. Uh, you can see the campaign options on the top. I can use the... Yeah. I can use the D-pad to kind of switch up if I want to do, like, a side mission. Or if I want to go back to the main mission. It's very easy. Uh, there's cool... I like how they've introduced the dialogue under this one because you've got uh, these these characters coming up as like full 3D animated things. They've got expressions, and there's like a there's a there's a big cast here. It definitely feels like something that a, a younger person, like a, the younger audience, might enjoy uh, more. So I'm not being negative because I actually have been having fun with this, except for it's been getting a little slower recently and a little bit more tedious. Uh, like I've been throwing that word around. Just because you gotta go on like the planets, do all these like side things, and it's kind of like I just really want to engage in the narrative. Cause I like where it's going, and I want to see you know what's happening with it. I don't think it's a terribly difficult game, but it, it'll give you a good challenge based on like, you know if you are doing the side missions or you're leveling up or focusing on different uh, things within the game. Again, these are very basic enemies, so they're pretty easy, and they're way lower of a level than I am, so they're like just a breeze for me. He's kind of like disintegrating them. But I wanted to show up just because this planet was nearby. And you're seeing how the planet has like a, a full sort of cycle in regards to just what you experience. The clouds are gorgeous. They all move. You see the day and the night. How it cycles around this large planet. And it feels like beautifully crafted uh, environments that you can just sort of fly around on. And really take in and explore and see all kinds of cool things. I guess this is more of a... This will be a better combat situation. But yeah, if I was getting more elemental based enemies, you know, with their shields, some are like missile based, and uh, yeah, they got a lot of different uh, variety in things, you know? And you can also go and like scan uh, 
creatures that you find on the world. They're, like, they're not dead planets. There's creatures roaming around. Sometimes you have to Analysis. scan a few of them, Analysis. and then you're able to sort of identify what their race is and all that, which I think is really cool. Again, gorgeous. This is like a desert map. I when we, we, we when I go to the next one, <laughs> we we we. Uh, I think you're really going to be just blown away by the look of it, but just take this in. It's it's so gorgeous. And you can see like so much work done into the environments. I'm just blown away by their quality. It's very impressive, and I like the look of it. Oh, here's an outpost area. That's a good thing to show off. So you get outposts. You can also destroy imps to get outposts. And here you're able to build things like an observatory to help reveal the map. Yeah, I need Electrum because I don't have enough. And it reveals visibility on the planet, workshops, refineries to get more money going, and stuff like that. Okay, well, we've seen this gorgeous planet. Let's do something more exciting. Let's get back into the war. Set that as the destination, which I already have. You can see I've explored a lot of the planet on this one because I've been doing a lot of battling. Uh, taking posts. And then you're seeing the the passive sort of currency that I'm going to get in about you know 10 seconds or so to gain uh, additional points. There's these like dark clouds that kind of come over, and those are more dangerous sections to be in because you can't just like fly away. And I guess we're going to have to go into space, but we we could fast travel to the the ship at least to kind of get going from that point. Uh, the Equinox, which is our main base of operations it all runs very fast and there's like there's no loading screens between uh where you're going and stuff i think it's very impressive Good news. so we, we jump into the uh the hyperdrive obviously saw that earlier and then we got our shipment of money so we see we got extra currency which would have been great when we were on that planet to build an outpost but whatever uh i like space Warning. But it's kind of like these things are just obnoxious as hell it's like i don't want to do this i don't care it should be a choice if I want to fight guys. It's just kind of like they didn't want space to be boring, I guess. But at the same time, it's kind of like I, I'm not really interested in this. Uh, they have some cool big bosses you can fight. I uh, like huge monster things, which are really neat. Uh, oh crap, I'm gonna die. At least you get to see the ship switching up. You gotta kind of like time your abilities. Cool. So you can swap out ships when you're dead. All my ships are gone, so that's great. Uh, but you would be able to switch between them see what options I have here so we gotta respawn at the equinox no big deal it's right there but that's good because I get to show that off uh, again each year like ships kinda do something different and you've gotta work on them but I, I do think that this is like the lamest thing in the world that there's these big weird trap things that show up just kinda like let me explore and enjoy Morning. space Incoming I don't wanna do this I don't care for it I don't think it's fun uh, and that kind of like similar attitude is sort of shown throughout where there's like all these little tiny things on planets that I don't really care for but I need to do in order to be able to do something else and it's just kind of like you know let me get back to my fun adventuring let me just continue on with my my journey here and enjoying the narrative but I can't because I'm constantly getting bothered by things if it's not those creatures, it's outlaws, and they have like a purpley thing, right? Incoming yep. Speak of the devil, eh? And then you have to do this big stupid circle thing, and then that's gonna trap me too, because it doesn't give you enough time to move. And then you gotta do again, you get shot from other people. It's just... I don't know, it's, it's exhausting. Like, nobody wants to do this. And we've got our regular boost too. You know, you only get so much of it, you see that on the left hand side there. Uh, and then there's asteroids to deal with. Like, you think going into hyperdrive, you'd just be able to just go, right? You know? Without having to, like, wait or deal with all this garbage. I mean, uh, it just sort of slows it down, because I've done this before. It was boring when I was here. <laughs> you know, the first time doing this. And it's, it's boring the second time. But again, space is gorgeous. Everything in this game looks so good. I just I love the visuals and the presentation of this. I think it's a really fun flying game, and I think it's sort of accessible for all ages. Uh, there are the, there is the co-op option too, if that's something you know that you're interested in. I guess uh, local two-player co-op with a split screen, and if you know if you want to play with like your kid or play with a friend or something, the option is there. 
because we're trying to catch up to the big ship there. I'm Whoa. Up some near your position. Might be worth checking out. No, thank you. It's got an all right cast. I'm, I'm not too blown away by them. Oh, come on. There we go. That dreadnought. It's like a big enemy ship. Shouldn't really be too spoilers. So it's just a big monster thingy. You're supposed to defeat things on the ground in order to deal with this. Yeah, I think this thing might be out of my caliber. Hold back. You can't win that fight. Really? I just kind of wanted to show it off. Uh oh. Oh. No. Where can I respawn at? Yeah, I think it's this planet orbit, which is what I want anyway. So that might actually save us some time. Fingers crossed, right? So yeah, the whole point of them is you kind of got to do like a staged mission. You have to go and fight the monsters that you've already been sort of fighting in the past. And uh, yeah, now you just have to do that at a larger scale in order to unlock and weaken the dreadnought to be able to take it on. See the request mission on the top right, so D-pad up might be a feature somebody uh, you know wants to use to get new missions and stuff but there's plenty to do on the planets it just it kind of it feels boringly repetitive at times and tedious like I said this is like do I really want to sit here and just blast things I'd like to engage in the narrative a bit more oh crap we're in the middle of a storm that's not good then you go down you blast the same enemies you hop around you disable things you build your little outposts and then you go on with your day and do the next thing, and it's kind of like, eh, I don't know. I guess I can show off the cool orbital drop, the big thing that comes down, and then... Blinding the screen for a sec. Blows up a bunch of guys, it's pretty cool. Probably should have said it's more intense moment, but you know what, I wanted to show it off. So yeah, I think there's quite a bit to this. You know, switching your weapons, I think that's a lot of fun for some people. Uh, different offerings because you need to adjust things. And you can do it all on the fly. It's just a seamless experience of swapping out guns. Lots of things to discover, places to find. Uh, pretty interesting universe where all of the aliens speak English like it ain't no thing. I think it's kind of funny. And it's about building alliances, uh, increasing your squad. You can take out extractors. You can do all kinds of things. Solve for inventory. I'm trying to think of like what would be a good sort of mission to show off. Hives are really not that exciting. Yeah, you know what? This this will be a good one. Six to eight. This is probably easier. It'll be less embarrassing. So yeah, you just put the indicator down and you can see where you're wanting to go on the map. Kind of the white icon. Yellow is usually the uh you know, main missions. I forgot, we can't really fly because we're in the storm. I think the storms are kind of like a fun little mix-up because they're, they're moving too, you know, you can be one second. Like I left the, the controller around for like two seconds to go do something and I came back and it was in the middle of the storm, it was just crazy. Oh, uh, what are we dealing with here? Yeah, probes. But I think the worlds are pretty expansive too. You just haven't gotten to see the beauty of this level, which is what I really should be doing because we we are like short on time. Here, let me let me get to a nice, gorgeous spot. Yeah, let's let's get up there because this really is just one of the most stunning planets I've come across. They all look pretty good, but th this one is just unreal. There's like a certain level of like gravity being messed up in it, and I think it's just amazing. There we go. Like the colors, they just pop, and there's something ab about it that's just so unreal, like surreal, basically. Like, look at the clouds and the floating objects, and then there's the ground and the beautiful grass, and they, they really are not afraid to go bright and beautiful. And I think this looks just lovely on the console. The One X is it, just stunning. Like, I mean, look at this. And it's all reactive, too. Like, you can bump into it, and it all sort of move to your ship and it's just this this level of quality that I really do appreciate there's a lot of content to this game I do find some things annoying in it I mean you know and it's not gonna be for everyone but I think as like what it's trying to be this sort of all ages 
long story, lots of content, lots of things to do. I think it nails that. And I think, uh, you know, the younger audience, which is obviously what this is targeted for with the, the toys, they're going to have a really good time with it. Uh, if you want to play it without them, you can. No problems there. And it's just sort of a, a lovely fly around. More like arcade style uh, space shooter, like a little spaceship thing. But it does have a, there's a good challenge there if you want it to. You can adjust the settings with difficulties. You can tweak it. There's lots of missions. Uh, it's not too hardcore. And it's based on you going around doing missions, completing objectives, building up an empire. Well, not an empire, but, you know, building up a resistance and taking on this great threat that's trying to use this special material that you've collected in order to do bad things. You know, kind of how it is. And I don't think I really spoiled any aspects of anything. You just kind of got in the context of where the situation is at this current point. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, they've done a great job on performance. It runs beautifully well. And the planet is just, you know, they're stunning. This, like, really, this is one of the, like, I think this is my favorite so far, but there's other ones that are seriously impressive. And you'll see that, and it's just, like, hours and hours of gameplay that you can have on this one. Doing missions that actually are, like, story-based, or doing side missions, or deliveries, or meeting new characters. The aliens are cool. And there's just, like, a ton to do. I mean, even look how the water here reacts to us. I think this is water. So anyways, that's Starlink. I think it's neat. Might be more fun with the toys, I can't say. But, uh, yeah. It's definitely quite an experience.